I recently set out to eat nothing but Waffle House for a week straight, and while I successfully completed that challenge, I still have some unfinished business. And that's because I set the very unrealistic goal of having Waffle House with the Jonas Brothers. When I started out on this journey, I had no idea whether I would succeed or not. But what I can tell you is that this journey will take me all over the country, from Virginia to the very first Waffle House restaurant in Georgia, and a Jonas Brothers concert in Michigan. Let's do this. From the beginning, I felt like there were two ways to go about this. There's door number one, which we can call sneaking in. It's a lot more invasive. For better or for worse, it's become really commonplace among YouTubers. I would also say it's just not my style. And then there's door number two, being invited. I'm gonna be honest, this route is probably harder, but it is not illegal. And that's the route that I wanted to take. And as a content creator, I generally try to stay away from making people's jobs harder than they already are. And that includes security personnel. And if you're just joining me for this quest, here's a brief recap of everything I've tried so far. Previously on the studio review. Sam started out by sending DMs to Kevin, Joe, and Nick. No one responded, so he decided to level up his game. He bought a billboard outside of Phoenix, Arizona ahead of their concert in the hopes that they'd see it on their way to the venue. He didn't hear back, and when we last left our hero, there was a glimmer of hope. He reached out to Waffle House and asked if there might be any way they could put him in touch with the Jonas Brothers. As it turned out, there was. They were talking to the band about bringing the Waffle House food truck to the Atlanta show. And if Waffle House got the green light, they could potentially bring Sam along. Waffle House did get the green light, but sadly things changed and they did not bring Sam along. His most promising door had been closed and he was back to square one. And at this point, you might be asking yourself, why the Jonas Brothers? The main reason is the song they wrote called Waffle House, which according to the band is about making your dreams come true. And the second reason is that it just seemed funny to me. I wouldn't consider myself a huge fan. Like I have fond memories of the Disney Channel era they were a part of, but I haven't kept up with the band super closely. The good news is I've seen them meet up with and even collaborate with other content creators in the past. Granted, those creators have much larger audiences than I do, but I felt like if I could pull this off, it would be a testament to what you can achieve if you just go for it. I started a project Project last year with less than a thousand subscribers and it landed me as a guest on a podcast hosted by the CEO of Taco Bell. Like literally, you can just do anything. It's crazy. So after the Atlanta show came and went, I started looking at other options and I realized that they were playing a show in Grand Rapids, Michigan the week of Thanksgiving. And I was already planning on being in Grand Rapids, Michigan for Thanksgiving. It's like it was meant to be. As a side note, there aren't any Waffle Houses anywhere close to Grand Rapids, Michigan, but I figured I could either buy some and freeze them or make them some homemade waffles using this Waffle House waffle. Mix. To get my tickets, I turned to GameTime, who's the sponsor of this video. GameTime is the fast and easy way to buy tickets to all your favorite events like sports and music and comedy. And GameTime takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. So if I search for the Jonas Brothers and then I find the show in Grand Rapids, you can see the arena and then I'm going to select this feature called All In Pricing. One thing that is so frustrating to me about buying tickets online is you think you're getting a good deal and then you go through the checkout process and there are like a thousand different fees and so you end up paying an arm and a leg for tickets. But with GameTime, you you can know from the start exactly how much you're going to end up paying at checkout. You can also see actual pictures from your seats. GameTime is obsessed with finding ways to help you save money on tickets. They have deals right up to the start of an event and even an hour after it starts. They also have a best price guarantee, so if you find tickets in the same section and same row, GameTime will credit you 110% of the difference. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with GameTime. Download the GameTime app, create an account, and use code REVIEW for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and use code REV. UE to get $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, so with tickets purchased, I doubled down on my efforts to make contact with someone ahead of the show. Just a side note about collaborations, I've always heard that if you wanna collaborate with a larger creator, you need to offer them something of value. It needs to be worth their time and beneficial for them to say yes. So in addition to bringing them waffles, which I thought would be a benefit in and of itself, I pitched the idea of making a TikTok or reel together that I thought could potentially expose new listeners to their music. At the time, I had just posted an Instagram reel that had over 5 million views. So to me, it seemed like a pretty convincing argument. I also made it clear that I would be super respectful of their time. Like I think we could knock it out in five to 10 minutes tops. So I went back and DM'd Frankie Jonas, who if you don't know is the fourth Jonas brother and their manager, Greg. I'm not sure why I didn't include the manager in my first round of outreach. Like that seems like an obvious place to start. I also posted an Instagram story asking for help from my followers. And I did get a couple leads. One was a recommendation to DM someone from the band that's opening for the Jonas brothers on tour, a band called Lawrence. So that sparked an idea 
idea. I DM'd the guy from Lawrence and the rest of the band, and then also everyone I could find in the band for the Jonas Brothers. And then also people that they've collaborated with recently, so other artists, writers, even photographers. And just a quick disclaimer here, I was reaching out for a business inquiry and tried to be super respectful, but please do not spam people. At this point, it didn't have to be the person who could say yes, it just had to be someone who knew somebody who could say yes. And the next day, believe it or not, I got a response. One member of the Jonas Brothers band responded and said, I'll see if I can get some traction with the folks. So again, not a yes or a no, but the opportunity to get my pitch in front of the people who could give me a yes or a no. And that was enough for me. On the off chance that this thing actually worked out, I wanted to be prepared. I wanted to learn as much as I possibly could about where they came from, their musical influences, potential topics of conversation, in my research, I dove deep into their parents' Instagram accounts, and I didn't find anything earth-shattering, but I did find these hilarious pictures of them as kids. I also wanted to become a master of waffles. If I was gonna be the one making the waffles for them, they couldn't just be okay. They needed to be the best waffles they've ever had. And eventually, my training brought me to Avondale Estates, Georgia. In my Waffle House video, I had asked the Waffle House Instagram account if I could come visit them in Georgia, and they said pull up. So I ended up going down to the Waffle House Museum, which sits on the site of the very first Waffle House restaurant. While I was there, I got to see some pretty fascinating stuff. This is Julia, she's gonna be showing me around today. I learned all about the Waffle House Index and their disaster response. This is a chair that they pulled from the rubble after Hurricane Katrina. I found out that the classic Waffle House layout that you see in almost every restaurant was built out on a warehouse floor to test and maximize the efficiency of fulfilling orders. They also pulled some stuff out of their Waffle House archives for me to take a look at. We went over to the other side of the building where we had some waffles together in the very first Waffle House restaurant. And eventually, I got to ask some hard hitting questions. As in, archivist, mm -hmm. is it accurate to say that you have access to historical documents that are not accessible to the general public? Yes. Okay, so, the Book of Secrets. What is on page 47? It's classified. Do you guys have any dirt on IHOP in there? Probably. Really? I don't know, I have no idea. <laughs> okay, all right, that's fair. When do you think the last time the Jonas Brothers actually went to a Waffle House was? I mean, hopefully within the past year. Okay, I just figure, I'm sure they love it. I'm just, yeah. they're so famous. Right. Be hard to pull off. Maybe a little bit. Does Waffle House have a stance on the Waffle House challenge? I don't think so. Okay, I have a stance on My stance what, is what that is stance? I think people should, if they do it, I think that they should go after the breakfast rush and Smart. they should pay their bill like at least every hour so Smart. that they can tip their server because the server might get off and That's not get true. that tip. Julia, thank you so much for hosting me. This has been a blast. Thanks for coming. Off camera, I asked a little bit about their experience catering the Atlanta show. Apparently the band and crew ate from the Waffle House food truck, but Kevin, Joe, and Nick stuck to some simpler options before they went on stage. I also learned that Joe is pretty into fancy coffee drinks, so I decided to shift my pitch a little bit. Maybe they wouldn't be as incentivized as I had hoped by the waffles, so I threw in the idea of bringing them coffee too, and made it a little bit less about the food and a little bit more about the collaboration. So as I was leaving the Waffle House Museum, I recorded a pitch video to send to them. I'll be at your show in Grand Rapids, Michigan. I'd love to say thank you by personally delivering some homemade waffles or some coffee. I want to be respectful of your time. It'll take five minutes tops. Maybe we could film a short video together. I don't know. Become best friends. Create memories that'll last a lifetime. So if you want to collab with someone Jimmy Fallon has called a man from Virginia or who many are referring to as a moron, my DMs are open. Also, I cannot get that song out of my head. At the Waffle I posted that video 11 days before the concert, and thankfully a ton of people shared the video and tagged the Jonas Brothers in the comments. It got about 14,000 views. I feel like there was a pretty good chance that one of them or someone on their team saw it, but still no response. So I went ahead and DM'd that video to everyone that I had messaged before, because sometimes it's easier to watch a video than to read a long message. It was seen by one band member, and the same band member that had responded before liked the video, but told me that sadly they hadn't gotten a response on their end either. A couple days passed and the momentum from the the video kind of died down. I felt like I was running out of options and wasn't really getting anywhere. At this point, I was starting to lose hope. Say something, I'm giving up on you. I'll bring you waffles if you want me to
Anywhere I would have followed you. Not like in a stalker way though. That'd be weird. Say something, I'm giving up on you. And I am feeling so small. It was over my head. I know nothing at all. Hey, Harrisonburg, Virginia, we're the Jonas Brothers, and we're coming to your city. Just over a week out from the Grand Rapids show, it was announced that the Jonas Brothers would be playing at College Game Day in Harrisonburg, Virginia, which is about an hour from where I live. And as great as all this sounded, and as thankful as I am for everyone that sent me messages about this, I knew from the start that this would be incredibly logistically complicated. If a concert venue would be like home turf for the band and their management, College Game Day would be like an away game for them. This was ESPN's turf, but I got to work reaching out to everyone I possibly could. I left a voicemail with JMU's Vice President of Student Affairs. I texted their student body president. I DM'd the one person I know that works at ESPN. I'm gonna be honest, when I first started reaching out, I did not know what I was asking for here. Like I was swinging way too big. I was suggesting a variety of ways for me to potentially be involved. Like I said, maybe I could help host the band in their green room. Or hey, maybe I could introduce them on stage. And in retrospect, I don't really know what I was thinking. Like they're not just gonna let anybody do that. But I also went back and emailed the band's manager to let them know I'd be there in case that would be a good time to connect. I ended up hearing back from a handful of the JMU people I reached out to, but the gist was we'd love to help, but ESPN ESPN runs the show. I didn't hear back from the band's manager, but I did hear back from my contact at ESPN who gave me an email address for someone who might be a producer on college game day. I emailed him with two days to go. As time went on and I wasn't getting anywhere, it occurred to me that maybe I could get a media pass. I tried reaching out to the local news that would be covering the event and asked if I could just tag along with them. I also asked about a media pass and an email to that producer at ESPN. And then on Friday night, the night before game day, the Jonas Brothers show up to a bar in Harrisonburg and start working the bar. I'd thought about going up the night before before, but I was convinced that they wouldn't show up early because there was a tour stop scheduled for that night. But I guess that show got canceled. I was at home preparing for game day and filming the tail end of my Dollar Tree video. I had a serious internal debate about dropping everything and driving there, but there was no way I could get to the bar in time before they left. I knew I'd have to shoot my shot the next morning, so I developed a game plan. My first thought was to go crazy early, maybe get in the front row and try to get a sign on TV. I'd been to college game day a couple different times at different schools, and at least once I'd managed to get a sign very prominently on ESP. The secret lies with Charlotte. But I found out the night before that the pit or the center area was only going to be open to JMU students with a valid ID card. And I think they started lining up at like 10 p.m. the night before. So my next idea was to double down on this media pass thing. I hadn't heard back from anyone, but I figured I could try showing up and asking for a media pass and seeing what happens. And my last resort was to just join the crowd and hope for the best. I packed up all my camera gear and made my way to Harrisonburg well before the sun came up. I also brought a gift basket that had that Waffle House waffle mix, some Waffle House syrup and a few other knickknacks. I left it in the car and figured I could go back and get it in the event that I was able to get a media pass. I also stuck some note cards and envelopes and a folded up poster board inside my camera bag, but more on that later. I arrived at the quad around 5.30 a.m. and it was already absolutely packed. There was no shot at being front row or anywhere close, so I was glad that I bailed on that plan. And pretty quickly, I just started asking people where media check-in was and tried to act confident. Good morning. Uh, which direction for media check-in? Back to my approach here, I wasn't trying to lie or deceive anyone. Like when people asked me questions, I was gonna tell them the truth. So when people asked me who I was with, I told them that I ran a small online media publication called The Studio Review. And a lot of people working were super nice but didn't know where media check-in was. But the fourth person I asked was like, let me walk you over there. We got to a roped off area and he told me to wait here while he went and talked to some important looking people. Eventually he came back to me and he was like, did you talk to them ahead of time? Amanda from Disney is the one who handles all that. So I told him, oh, okay, thank you. Let me, let me check on that. And at this point I was thinking to myself, okay, this does not look very promising, but I did go ahead and send an email to several different people named Amanda who worked in communications at ESPN. I was like, hey, I'm here at game day. I was told I need to get in touch with you about a press pass. Please let me know where I can meet you. I wasn't even sure if I was sending that to the right Amanda. And even if I was, I wasn't positive that I had guessed her email correctly, but I figured it couldn't hurt to try. I wasn't super psyched about this, but there was a real possibility I might just need to post up as close as I could get to the stage and wait until the band came on at 11. That would be over 5.00. 
five hours of standing in this crowd of rowdy college students. But I wasn't sure what else I could do besides wait. The sun came up and some guy threw up super violently in the trash can that was directly next to me. So I was like, yeah, this, this is not gonna cut it. There were a few people with JMU polos and cameras walking around who did not have media passes. So I talked to a couple of them and found out we were kind of in the same boat. They were there to get footage, but hadn't gotten any credentials yet. So when I saw one of those guys later on in the day with a media pass, I was able to find out the spot that he got it from. So I went over there where I found a small circle of people inside a roped off area. I asked the security guard if that's where media check-in was, and he said yes, and just let me in. As I joined the circle, two ESPN employees were going around and asking everyone their name and their organization and checking them off a list and then handing them a media pass. So on the one hand, I was like, oh my gosh, I found it. But on the other hand, I was like, well, I'm 100% not on that list. So I guess the jig is up. So when it got to me, I was like, I'm Sam Reed. I'm with the studio review. I don't think I'm on there yet, but... And one of the ESPN people was like, were we emailing this morning? And as the crowd had grown, cell service had gotten worse and worse. So I hadn't actually been able to check if I'd gotten a response to any of my emails. So in the moment I was just like, Amanda? And she was like, yeah, I'm gonna get these people set up, but if you can come back in like 15 minutes, we can talk. So I'm like, that sounds great. Thank you. So I took those 15 minutes to walk away from the crowd and see if I could get enough cell service to see what her email said. I eventually made my way to a hotel where I used the lobby Wi-Fi to check my email and I saw that her email essentially said no because they had this approval process that closes on Friday, which was confusing because it was like, then why would you tell me to come back in 15 minutes? So I came back anyway. I ended up waiting for a lot longer than 15 minutes, but while I was waiting, I was psyching myself up. I had my driver's license and a business card out just to like prove that I was who I said I was. Eventually she came back and before I could give her my spiel, she was like, I can give you this media pass on a temporary basis. You can have it until like 8.20 AM and you need to stick with me. But after that, I need it back because it's my last one and I have to give it to someone else. So a thousand thoughts are swirling around in my head. I'm like, this is amazing. Did I just talk my way into this? What I said was, oh man, I was actually hoping to get footage of the band's performance at 11. And she was basically like, yeah, I'm sorry, I can't make that happen. So I was like, you know what? I'll take you up on that. At least I'll be able to get some B-roll. So she led me and a couple other media people backstage where I was able to get some really cool footage. But sadly, the time came to hand the media pass back because they were getting ready for the show to go on air. I was tempted to kind of sneak away once I was in the roped off area or go make a fake pass or something. But I was like, no, that's that's not what I want to be about. I want to do this the right way. So I went back to that hotel lobby to regroup and make a new plan. I used those note cards to write some notes that I could hopefully hand to one of the Jonas Brothers. Each note explained why I wanted to collaborate and then included a business card and a logo sticker just to give some legitimacy to my brand. I happened to bring four envelopes with me. So after I had written notes to Kevin Kevin, Joe, and Nick, I went ahead and wrote a fourth one for their manager, Greg. I also used a nice bathroom while I was in the hotel instead of the porta potties that they had out on the quad. On my way back, I tried to see where the band might enter the performance area, but it was kind of a circus, so I knew even if I could get close, there's no shot I'd be able to hand them anything. At this point, I figured my best bet was to head back into the crowd and at least get some footage of them performing. It was around 9.25 at this point, so I still had an hour and a half to stand there before their 11 a.m. performance. They were gonna play one song on TV at 11 and then two more songs for the crowd after the broadcast ended at noon. The quad was just swimming with people at this point. I found out later that this broke the record for the largest crowd for college game day ever. The host came and did a segment over on the side stage where I was posted up, so it got even more crowded. As I was waiting, I kept thinking about that Virginia Tech Go Sports girl. Can you just explain what's going on here? Hi, thank you, I have no idea. Eventually, the Jonas Brothers came out to perform their new song, Strong Enough, with Bailey Zimmerman. And again, I knew at this point I was purely just getting footage. There was like zero chance of me actually interacting with them. And if the footage looks shaky, that's because I was trying to stand my ground against half a dozen intoxicated college girls who showed up last minute and were trying to push me out of the way so that they could film stuff with their phone. By the time they got off stage, it was like 11.15, and I debated staying there for the noon performance, but ultimately decided I'd be getting almost identical shots to what I already had. So I went back to the hotel one last time and used the bathroom again and then used Wi-Fi to check what type of car they were riding in the night before. Then I pulled that poster board out of my bag and got to work making a sign. My plan was to post up on their way out. I located two possible vehicles that could be theirs and saw a few people congregating around what I think was the only route out of the quad. So I went to a spot where I could watch the end of the game day broadcast. Everybody picked JMU to win who ended up losing. And I could also kind of see the band stage from that spot as well. They played Sucker as their final song so once they got to the second chorus I started making my way towards the exit. I figured it would be really 
really crowded right out of the gate, so I backed up about 100 yards where they'd hopefully get a clear view of my sign with fewer distractions. The spot ended up being perfect. I saw Joe get into a van and got a lock on it, so when they drove past me, I would be ready. At the last second, a bunch of people realized what was happening, so it ended up getting super crowded, but fortunately, no one got between me and the van. So right here in this moment, I'm holding the sign, and Nick Jonas was about four feet away from me in the van. I could definitely tell that it was him, and I saw him look up at me from his phone, but the windows were tinted, so I couldn't really see what his reaction was after he read the sign. And I kind of thought that was that. But as I was packing my camera stuff up, I saw their line of vans moving pretty slowly. So I was like, I'm not gonna run after the vans, but I wonder if I head in that direction, maybe I'd see them again at a stoplight. So I started moving and they kept taking right turns around the quad at JMU. And it happened like three times where as soon as I started getting close, a light turned green and they drove a little further away. But after the vans went like three quarters of the way around the quad, I saw a huge commotion. The vans had stopped and it looked like people were getting out. In retrospect, I have no idea why they stopped and got out. Like they went into this super crowded area. One of them grabbed a microphone and said something like, hey Harrisonburg, thanks so much for having us. And then they got right back into the vans. But I had caught up with the vans right before they got out. So I had a second to think. I was about to post up with my sign one more time and that's when I recognized Greg, their manager, who was walking a couple steps ahead of the group of state troopers who was escorting the band. So all within the course of about 10 seconds, I recognized him, reached into my pocket and found the note that was addressed to him and then timed it perfectly where right as he was walking past, I was able to say, hey Greg, this is for you. And I handed him the envelope. And I don't know what was going through his head, but he looked pretty pleasantly surprised. And he was like, oh, thanks. And he took it from me. Just to toot my own horn for a second, I feel like the fact that I was able to call him by name and have something prepared that was specifically addressed to him was a big brain move. So they did that thing where they walked into the crowd and then got right back in the vans. I tried to get footage of that, but it was super chaotic. So I positioned myself to hold up my sign one final time as they drove away. And there was some sort of backup with the driver or the police escort or something. So I had a lot of time to just stand there and point to my sign. Again, windows were tinted, so I couldn't really see which of them were looking at the sign and which weren't. But I know for a fact I made extended eye contact with Jack Lawless, who's their drummer and was also the drummer for DM. NCE. And then as soon as they were gone, I went and took a picture with my sign and posted it to my Instagram story. I also reshared the pitch video from the Waffle House Museum in case they looked me up because Greg now had my contact information and my Instagram handle. So I left feeling great. I feel like I did everything I could to set myself up for a yes without like trespassing or harassing them. And I felt like the ball was in their court. If they responded to me or reached out, that would be phenomenal. But if not, I knew I'd still get to celebrate by going to their concert in a few days. As a side note, like five different people came up to me at game day and said something like, hey, are you Sam? Or are you the Taco Bell guy? So if I met you at JMU, thanks for saying hi. That was awesome. Three days later, my wife and I made our way to Michigan for Thanksgiving, where we got to go to the Jonas Brothers concert with her sisters. I brought that gift basket in just in case I ended up hearing back and getting an opportunity to drop it off with them. And just want to give a shout out to Game Time for the seats. We were in like the seventh row off to the side of the stage and had a great view. They played through their entire catalog of songs, so we got to hear all the classics. My only complaint was that they didn't include any songs from Camp Rock. Can't win them all. Eventually the night came to a close and unfortunately I didn't hear back from anyone on the band's team, but it was still a blast getting to see them in concert. So after all was said and done, I would still consider this quest incomplete. I'm gonna pause my efforts for now, but Kevin, Joe, and Nick, if you see this, I'm always down to collaborate. If nothing else, this took me on a wild ride and I got to have the shared experience of going to the concert together. So thanks so much for watching and just remember that even when your plans don't work out like you thought they would, it's gonna be okay. I'll see you soon. Say something, I'm giving up on you